access to a level three or four biosafe or biocontainment laboratory and its facilities is restricted to authorised and competent personnel only. In the UK and at VLA, staff must have full counter-terrorism clearance. They must have full occupational health clearance to work with flu and skin and respiratory sensitizers. And they must be trained to work to relevant standard laboratory operating procedures and risk assessments. It's the responsibility of those using the laboratories to ensure that they're fit and well and capable of working safely, not just for their own protection, but for that of other users. Before entering the facility, laboratory personnel must have specific training in handling pathogenic and potentially lethal agents and be fully aware of the dangers they pose. Staff will have undergone at least 40 hours of supervised training with these agents and in the facility. They are assessed for their competency before being allowed to work independently in the laboratory. Why is it necessary to have such stringent rules and supervision of staff? We need to ensure that all staff achieve the same level of competence. We have the pre-checks in place. This is to ensure that any PPE they're going to wear fits them personally. We have medical checks to ensure they're medically fit to work with these viruses in case they have to take any post-exposure antiviral treatment and also for their vaccinations. We also need staff to read through all the risk assessments and SOPs so they're familiar with them before they come into this environment. We then have a system in place of supervision for a minimum of 40 hours and this is deemed necessary as a, ta as a guideline to ensure that they've fully familiarised themselves with all the procedures, but some staff do require more than 40 hours. How do you manage the process? All staff complete their own checklist with the pre-entry treks that we've already discussed. They then will go in with a supervisor for 40 hours in the building. Once they've completed their 40 hours, they then approach the building officer who will carry out a formal assessment. This is both um, an assessment on them working, but also an interview basis on how they would deal with a spillage. If they pass this assessment, their own staff pass will then be activated so they can enter the high security unit on their own. How do you train staff in contingency procedures? As part of their supervised working within the building, staff will be trained in particular contingency procedures. But also once a year, the buildings are taken down for maintenance work. And during this time, we will have a contingency procedures day. When all staff must attend, we mock up spillages, alarms going off, and they can just refresh on the training, and it just gives them ongoing competence that can be evidenced. There are stringent rules and procedures for entering the facility that must always be adhered to. Follow me. Entry to the facility is by security key and double entry doors. Either door will only open once the other door has locked. The reception or lobby area houses a manned control room where all personnel are required to sign into the entry logbook and check on who else is working in the facility. Where appropriate and if available, prior to entry, staff should check the pressure dials and warning lights to ensure that the facility is functioning correctly. Any consumables, equipment or specimens required are passed through a double-doored pass hatch or fumigation chamber. There is no need to shower before going into the laboratory, but staff should always make sure that toiletries and towels are available for when they leave the containment areas. A door leads from the changing room into the containment area. Now we're ready to pick up our samples and equipment from the pass hatch. On completing work before leaving the containment facility, a number of procedures need to be completed and again, strict rules must be observed. Anything used that may tear, such as a bag, should be put in the autoclave tin. Anything that comes out of the cabinet must be thoroughly surface decontaminated with Vercon or an approved equivalent and left for 10 minutes before removing. 
all sample containers must be surface decontaminated, clearly labelled in appropriate sealed plasticware suitable for low temperatures, and be stored safely in a freezer. Any equipment or matter left in the cabinet should be fumigated in the cabinet. The biosafety cabinet must be shut down properly after use. Signage should be put in place to indicate its fumigation status. Once the working area is organised, clean, decontaminated and ready for the next person, all required logbooks should be completed and any low stocks notified. Before leaving the lab area, staff should make sure that all the necessary equipment is turned off at the wall. All waste generated during the work should be disposed of in the correct streams. On leaving the actual lab area, staff must wash their hands. Any relevant work documentation should be faxed or scanned out and staff should notify other users that they are leaving the facility. Laboratory and working clothes should be placed in the laundry bin housed in the shower lobby. When leaving the containment area, staff must shower for at least three minutes, including a full hair and body wash. On signing out, the building officer must be notified of any issues that have been encountered, including low stocks of consumables.